Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We have been talking to Shai Tubali about his book, Unlocking the Seven Secret Powers of the Heart, a Practical Guide to Living in Trust and Love. Um, and right now there's just so much um, violence and trauma in your um, home country um, in Israel. And I just wanted to, um, well, first of all, just ask how you're doing and how this affects, you know, how some of the things in this book are relevant to the current circumstances. Yeah, that, that's, that's a beautiful question to, 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 to try to, to relate this, uh, uh, the, the teachings of this book uh, to, to the situation. Well, I'm, um, first of all, it is very important to, to understand that uh, someone who, who uh, lived in Israel for, for, for a long, long time uh, becomes pretty, uh, um, uh, let's say, immune to, to these situations because mm. uh, I, I uh, lived in Israel, I lived in Israel before I moved to, to Germany uh, for, uh, for something like 33 years. Oh, wow. And, you, and during that time, uh, I had experienced uh, uh, three wars, three wars that, that, were, that, that infiltrated uh, the civilian life. So, mm. so I know what, what, it, what it feels like uh, to, to be at, at, uh, in a war zone as a child. Mm. Therefore, uh, even when I talk to, to my family, uh, everyone is already uh, in, in immune to it. Everyone is, is strong mm. enough to, uh, or perhaps, wow. uh, uh, perhaps has, has, has become has hardened enough or toughened enough to, uh, to, uh, to participate in this without uh, uh, entering severe shock. Mm. But I, I think what, what, is, what is most important here, if we, because we talked before about the universal heart, is whether we can perceive this situation not, not through our divided heart, which means perceiving it from, from the part that only identifies with those we love, those we consider to be our own, our own people, you see? Because the, this situation is, is a situation of, 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 uh, of two nations and two, and two uh, uh, entities. And be, behind these nations, there, 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 there are people, there are humans. Mm. And, they, and they should, should not by any means uh, become faceless to us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the, the question is whether we can embrace the situation, whether our heart can be big enough, broad enough to, to embrace those who do not belong to our, to our own tribe. Mm. You see, mm -hmm. there is a, um, I think that there is the story of, uh, of Desmond Doss. Desmond Doss who, uh, who, who, uh, um, who participated in, um, um, in, in the, uh, during the, uh, during World War II. Uh, and, and, and in the in uh, uh, battles against the, the, the Japanese, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was a pacifist, so he refused to uh, to 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 hold guns, to hold uh, to to hold a rifle, and uh, and uh, and therefore he only he only uh, um, served in in battle as a, as a. Um, uh, I'm losing the words. Uh, the the one who is taking care of the wounds of the oh, a medic, a medic. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So so then the what what touched me the most about about this story is that the, aside from from the fact that during the uh, one night one one night uh, uh, of one battle, uh, he saved around seventy men uh, while moving alone. In the in the battlefield, completely exposed, mm. he even he even uh, didn't refuse the uh, the cries of of of, uh, uh, of Japanese. Mm. You see, he tried even to to help them. 
Mm-hmm. And and for him, there was only one question that that that, that directed his heart during that uh, unbelievable night, and that was how would Jesus be? How would Jesus act in in this battlefield? Mm. You see, and and this is this is a very good training because the, because whether we call it Jesus or the universal heart or or the or the heart of the of the whole, the heart of of the universe, we cannot we cannot divide. Mm. You see, and when we when we stop dividing, uh, we train our heart to to become much broader than we than we've ever imagined it could be. So, so for me, when when I watch the entire situation, it is it is like that, and the, so the the pain or then and the compassion and the and and the empathy is is all inclusive. How do you watch when you know that your family is back and can be harmed? I know that you've sort of hardened yourself into just getting used to it. This is kind of how life has been. I mean, how do you hold the the tension of, you know, shoring up your heart so that it doesn't break into a thousand pieces when these things happen. Um, And at the same time, have a unified heart, not a divided heart. I know we talked about the story, but I just think it's a very interesting contrast where you've, you've learned to kind of harden, not harden your heart. I guess it's what would you say you're hardening yourself then to if it's not your heart when oh, you no. said your family? No, no, I, I wouldn't say uh, that, that, that uh, anything about hardening the heart. That 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 would be the the complete opposite of the of the. Yeah, so, but, but you said that your family just kind of like what? what how do you describe that? Okay, this is ah, happening that, again. Yes, maybe because because people uh, become uh, naturally uh, since the. the they have gotten used to this type of uh, of experiences. Uh, they they are less uh, uh, terrified or shocked. For example, uh, uh. here in in Germany in Berlin, uh, young people are so um, I think that they, they 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 are so vulnerable and so fragile because they don't know uh, uh, what it feels like to 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 confront these kind of uh, of uh, calamities. This kind of uh, of terrifying events, you see. Okay, I see. Uh, so you learn how to confront those terrifying events through just being living through them and knowing I'm okay. Or how do you confront those terrifying events and feel okay afterwards? Again, here 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 you are bringing up a, a, a good point because I think some some choose to simply close their hearts. To become completely tribal, antagonistic, and vengeful, mm-hmm. and this is, I think, what we are uh, when we when we discuss the the one of the greatest heart's powers is uh, is is the power to of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we will we will uh, refer to that, uh, and then. Uh, and then um, there are those who who. Have perhaps toughened up or, or have become uh, uh, used to these situations, and that, in a way, uh, is what can be regarded as a, a, a post-traumatic growth. Mm. So, so, so this is this mm, is actually wow. a, 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 an experience that that has made us uh, grow and and become uh, mature on the basis of experience rather mm. than uh, on the basis of some form of naivety you see mm-hmm. you don't simply uh, say that everything is love and light but you mm-hmm. say that everything is love and light because you have known sorrow mm-hmm. you have known darkness mm-hmm. you have known uh, even death mm-hmm. you see out of this you 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 arise as a, as an untainted uh, lotus flower Mm. Mm. interesting so you know one reaction would be to close your heart but in some ways what i'm hearing you say is you open and be present to what is which is that this is happening and you um 
recognize that this is a reality. It could be a reality in your world. And so you grow through that reality, just like COVID. I think for a lot of us, we've grown to learn about the unknown, toughen ourselves up to the unknown. So when the next pandemic hits, I'm ready (laughs) or I know (laughs) what to expect. (laughs) But I see. So it's, so it's toughening up, but at the same time, um opening up your heart to forgiveness i mean have you had anyone in your family who've been injured or killed and how and and how did you reach a place of forgiveness um even though that may have happened or have friends that have had known someone that have been harmed no i've I've been quite quite fortunate in this regard but but i know that that i know what i will never do Without, without a question. First of all, I will never uh, uh, close my heart thinking that, uh, that life has, has done me wrong. You see, I, I, will, I will never feel that life has turned against me and that, that has been a, a personal attack on, mm. on my own feelings. Mm-hmm. I don't experience myself as the center of the universe and I don't expect that I, I should be treated of all people uh, 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 more nicely by, by life or, or existence, you see. So, so then I, I, I live with my eyes open and I see that, that for instance, the, uh, everyone has their families and everyone worries about their families. And, and so, so then perhaps in, in this heart can include all of these families and uh, beyond beyond my personal concern. Second, I know without a doubt that I will never become vengeful and I will never harbor uh, uh, negative feelings toward the, the attackers, even though this is extremely tempting. Mm. Uh, and here perhaps, uh, uh, you know, we, we gave the example of, uh, uh, of of Israel is uh, that, that, that some of them have become uh, tough in the sense of vengeful, angry, and then cynical. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, in this book a, a story that I mentioned, perhaps you remember of, uh, of one uh, uh, Eva Moses Kaur. Mm-hmm. Eva Moses Kaur, uh, she, she just died uh, several years ago. Uh, she, uh, she was an American. At least after after wait uh, after the, the concentration camps, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly, and uh, and she was a, a great teacher, a great influencer, a great speaker on the on the topic of uh, forgiveness, and and she I think she had every right to be an influencer, because uh, my own experience uh, of of abandonment uh, uh, is nothing compared to to what she. Had under- so she was a, she and her sister were twins. Her whole family were killed. Um, I don't know if her sister was also killed, but so her twin sister no, was- they, No, they okay. both survived. Okay, yes. they were going through medical testing in, dur- in the concentration camps, and then her whole family was killed. And during the trial, she was able to hug the people, which I, I was just amazed that she had that much love and forgiveness. But sorry, I just wanted for people who weren't familiar with the story. But go ahead. No, it's it's extremely it's extremely well summarized. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, um, yes. She she actually she she went through a very difficult process of uh, of uh, of not being able to forget to forgive mm-hmm. and to forget and and uh, at the same time she 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 felt that she was haunted by uh, by mm-hmm. by these experiences mm-hmm. uh, and then at a certain point she realized that the, the, actually the only way she, she could ever become free wo- was to, uh, to forgive unconditionally to, uh, and, and thus to, uh, to disengage herself, not only from the past, but also from those she considered to be her victimizers. Mm-hmm. So uh, indeed, she she approached uh, at court uh, the one who was uh, was regarded as the the bookkeeper of Auschwitz, and she kissed him and she she looked him in the eye and she and she told him that that she that she forgave him. Mm. Uh, he died, by the way, uh, very soon after. 
but uh, mm. I, I can't imagine what, uh, what he had felt uh, when, she, when she told him that. Mm. Uh, because that's very unusual. So, so if, you, if you tell this story to, to Israelis, for instance, they would think that the, 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 this, was, this is completely crazy. Mm. It's, it's, it's very unpopular and very uncommon. So, so that's, that's something that only our awakened heart, the heart that, that has known the, the taste of, of forgiveness and knows what, why, why it's worth it, can, can appreciate. You see, because, because when, as long as our heart is closed and we, we are uh, servants of the mind, the, of our thought, our thinking, it just doesn't make sense, you see. But but uh, but the heart has its own logic. It it, it doesn't need the, the, this this type of of logic that that believes that it it protects us as an organism. Mm. It protects our body and mind by by remaining vengeful, mm. but actually it weakens us in the long run. Yeah. So it's almost going to. Um... And, and I think the first chapter you're talking about the wisdom of the heart. And so we often look at it towards our minds as knowing the answers, but really if we went to our hearts and said, what is the right reaction at this moment? Because I think when, I mean, I, I um, watched the, I actually have a hard time watching in the news and just seeing people whose children and wives have been um, killed. And it's hard for me not to just feel like unraveled. So I'd rather just not look at it. Um, but I'm realizing now from this conversation, it's about opening up your heart and watching and feeling compassion for all, you know, it, because it's just so hard to watch, but to, because I can relate very instantly to like, oh my gosh, that's a mother, that's a son, that's, you know, and, and I can feel it immediately and it's almost too much to bear, but yes. I think it's just bearing it anyways, because that's how, um, as, as I'm, I'm connecting with this, it's, it's when we connect with that, um, infinite part of our heart and we open up to it we open up our heart and we open up everyone's heart because our hearts as you said before we're all connected so if i open my heart and feel the pain then it allows others to feel the pain and to also hopefully feel the love or have like a, a healing of the universal heart it, that's what i'm getting from this yes, um yes 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 I, I hope by the, by the way that, that it's clear that uh, that uh, that when we speak of uh, um, sometimes sometimes it seems like the, that the, all the all the uh, the teachings of the heart are all about uh, about uh, sweet and beautiful experiences of unity, oneness with the universe and oneness with uh, with humanity. But but the heart, the universal heart, is also bleeding. Mm -hmm. You see, we also feel the pain of, 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 of the world. Mm -hmm. when, when we are unconditionally open, we feel the, the overwhelming beauty of love and compassion, but we also experience the, the, the pain of humanity because we don't uh, 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 keep our filters. You see, it, uh, we, we don't uh, divide or, or separate our heart from, from the rest of humanity. Mm -hmm. So and and I think that, that this kind of of willingness to to experience the pain fully eventually leads us to 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 right action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so, and I, I also think it's a universal healing. You know, the, it's healing. So it's healing the universe. So if you can open yourself up to it, you're healing not only yourself, but you're healing other people who maybe can't feel the pain. I mean, it's not fun to feel the pain. I don't like to feel the pain. But if I think about watching the news and opening my heart up to the pain, it's understanding the more challenging side of, of the heart, right? Which it feels pain. It feels incredible pain and sorrow and grief and... Um, yeah, the hardship of, of 
those people and, and uh, I just, I'm going to start crying thinking about it. So I just better stop now. <laughs> but it's, yeah, and, and I think that's the hard part to feel that pain because it feels like it will never end. Like, you know, and the, I, I think about when my dad died and I thought I'm never going to stop crying because it just, the, the pain just seems so infinite. So when you tap into the infinite heart, you also have to tap into the infinite pain and it feels like it is infinite, but I know for a fact that I did eventually stop crying, <laughs> but it doesn't feel good. And it's not, it's not kind of a typical thing. I can tell my friends I'm doing because <laughs> it doesn't seem like a normal way to proceed in life, right? To kind of feel the immense pain. But I guess if you think of it as, a way to a way that you can help heal the world, then I guess it feels like there's some meaning and merit to it. Um, but it's very hard to do. Um, yeah. But if, um, if we if we don't if we do, we don't resist the pain, I know that it feels that that it's uh, it's it's unending that that it is like a bottomless pit, and then and then the, the, that's why we we actually don't enter it. You see. But, and this is, I think, our problem that we don't enter it fully, because if we really enter the enter this dark tunnel, it, it what happens is that eventually the heart itself transforms the pain into into love. You see, mm. it's just uh, if if you I, I I know that that several mm. people have told me that, and I I myself have experienced that in the face of uh, of death of uh, of loved ones. That if you if you really go all the way with the grief, you realize that that above above it the uh, this above that de death and and sorrow, there is some some kind of 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 overwhelming love, mm. you see, mm. and uh, and you can actually sense it that that, that it, it encompasses your grief and your and your sorrow and your tears and uh, and it just waits until until all the grief melts melts away melts dissolves into into mm. this uh, uh, all-encompassing love wow so, so I, there's I, a, I think yes. there's a jewel at the end of the tunnel keep on going definitely definitely i i think that, that our problem is that is that we don't we we simply don't know how to be in sorrow that is a total sorrow and then we are divided or we are in conflict with it or we are, we fear it you see because mm -hmm. because it feels too dangerous or overwhelming and, and this is exactly what happened to me at, at that at that night you see uh, because it was we are talking here about a very long relationship that that was the, the that had been the, the the center of of my life mm -hmm. and i felt at that time that 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 the, this is at the end and then i allowed it to to flow without any kind of resistance and that that led to to this to this transformation not it's not it wasn't some kind of grace that uh, that was the opposite or or the transcendent part of myself. Uh, you see, it was yes it was the transformation of 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 pain itself into into love and forgiveness Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So it's, it's going the, the alchemy of going all the way, all the way, all the way until you like wrung it all the way out until there is no more sorrow that your human heart opened. It's not the, oh, you know, some, you know, God came and you know, like opened your heart with a bolt of lightning. It was the no. human heart. Wow. That's no, no, very it, interesting. Yes. yes. I, I think Eva Moses core, the, the Holocaust survival, she, she transformed her her grief into into compassion and into forgiveness it's not we we, we sometimes think of, of compassion and forgiveness as something as as different elements you see mm -hmm. something other than the pain but but i think that that if you really work with the pain it shows you the the light that is that is deep within it mm. it wants to it wants to 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 become uh, something else mm. you see mm. it has it has a, a some some light nature some some great teaching it is a mm -hmm. master mm. it is not something to to get rid of it's not something to shift 
from uh, to the realm of the heart of the love of love and beauty. Right. Mm. You see, it is in in the in the middle of it, and at its very core, there is this undying love of 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 the universal heart. That's mm. that's my experience. Mm. Mm. It's really interesting. I um uh you know Krishna Das, um who's a singer. When you talk yes. to them, there there's so much um, depth and feeling and expression, and um, and it's like he he lives in this place that we're, you're talking about, where it's like really exper experiencing the pain and the sorrow and the misery of, of the human condition, and I think the music is the thing that allows him to go very deep into these places. I mean, everyone has a different vehicle to kind of go deeply into those places, but um, um, it wasn't until just now that I recognize that, um, and I've read this before, like people going to the dentist and for someone forgetting to put Novocaine in their mouth and <laughs> feeling the pain. And this person who was, who was an awakening being just kept on focusing on the exquisite pain, focusing, focusing, being present, being present, being present with the mm. pain until he actually got to the point that he was completely blissed out because he, the, the no, not, you know, having his teeth <laughs> drilled out of his head was so painful so um i never thought of it in this particular context of going so deep into the unexpressed feelings that you may have about these as a way of um of, of getting to the other side because oftentimes you know in, in a lot of this spiritual stuff in the new age world, they talk about providing a protective bubble against you yourself and providing a boundary and like putting yourself in a bubble um, or watching, you know, putting a protective shield against yourself. It's an energetic bubble and um, and watch out for energy vampires. Like there's this all this kind of um, conversation around these topics. And I Being used to walk protected around. protected as possible. Yes. Yeah. And I, I used to walk around getting scared and putting up energetic bubbles everywhere. And then I realized that recently that, or not recently, probably about five or six years ago that, you know, when you do that, they're, they're shields. And so they, whether they're energetic or not, they're real shields. And, 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 uh, it, and now from this conversation, we're meant to feel, we're meant to feel those things. Because if not, why were we given this heart that can feel those things? Like, why are we designed in this particular way? if we weren't supposed to actually feel the pain because, and thinking about the pain as being a place of, as a gift. And I love the idea of post-traumatic growth. Um, that is just such a, a brand new way of reframing it that makes it easier, I think, to digest. I mean, if you're an empath, which I am, you feel these things and it's just like, I don't want, I've got enough to deal with my pain, let alone feel your pain, but I'm, I'm realizing it's our pain. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter at this point, right? Your pain is my pain. And if I'm feeling it, it's because there's still some things within myself that are unresolved. So, you know, bring it in because it's just, it's just bring, it's, it's a very different way of navigating life. And it probably doesn't make sense to anyone unless they're on a spiritual path. <laughs> But, definitely, definitely. But I'm I, hoping, I, it, yeah. I, I I believe that that the more we uh, try to guard ourselves, the more uh, vulnerable and uh, and or, or fragile or breakable we become. Mm -hmm. You see, and uh, and uh, there is one one method that uh, that uh, I I uh, that I uh, developed many years ago and that I, I still work with. And and with the, uh, this method is called the expansion method, and 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 it has one one application or, or one one uh, uh, version that is is the, called the expansion of trauma. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now, when uh, the way I I work with people in this in this technique is is very different from what we uh, we we would generally think that that should happen with our uh, with our deep seated 
negative memories, mm -hmm. we, usually we want to shrink them. Mm -hmm. We want to we want to overcome them, but actually in the process it's called the expansion because because the person is guided to let it spread through uh, his or her entire body and being, and 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 let it uh, and let it expand more and more until it reaches its its maximum limits until mm -hmm. it cannot expand anymore so 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 the person needs to to bring it to 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 make it as big as possible and 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 in this in this type of uh, of uh, of a process actually what happens is that is that the trauma changes its form and becomes uh, becomes a, space and uh, and 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 love and and infinity and light and so on and so on so the more we try to shrink it the more we try to dissolve it or to overpower it mm -hmm. the the more we are actually attacked by the memory because we feel that we are so small that we cannot contain the memory you see mm -hmm. but what, what what happens is that mm -hmm. is that when we finally say okay let's see you I want now to see to see to see uh, uh, the, uh, you in in your actual size in a, your actual measure. Uh, show yourself completely to me. Then it expands, but at a certain point you realize that it has limits, mm. and that beyond the limits, you find infinity, you find love, you find you find bliss. Mm. So so mm. it's it's such an and 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 unexpected uh, shift but it works uh, every time and in a, and with amazing results we have there's a technique that i usually use with clients that are very similar to that and the shocking thing about these techniques is it can be like five minutes <laughs> like you spent your whole life mm -hmm. dreading these things but if you go intensely into it and i have a different thing where you go intensely and you go into it and you go into it and you go into it and you feel it so intensely on the inside and then it mm. it's a, it's kind of like the same as when you do you know the whatever the, the acupressure or when you you have pressure points on your body you just and then it gets to the point where it's you can't you can't even ma manufacture that feeling on the inside and it lets go but what it's so shocking to me when people go through that exercise, whether it's, I like the idea of expanding a lot more, whether you go inside or outside, because there is no inside or outside, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you yeah. go into that point, um, it's shocking. To, it's always shocking to me how you could be actually carrying something around for 20, 30 years, you know, a really long time. And in a short period, in relatively short period of time, let's say five, 10, 30 minutes at the max, I've never seen anyone go through 30 minutes of this, unless it's someone like a death or something very powerful, but, you know, a grudge against someone, five, 10 minutes is gone. <laughs> You've been carrying this thing around for 30 years. It's Amazing. just shocking to me. I don't know if you experience the same thing when you have um, your students go through, but it's, um, that's the, alchemy and how quickly it occurs it's actually and that it is finite it's not yes. this infinite thing so Amazing. yeah so um what a lovely conversation um we've got through only two of your secrets <laughs> but we'll have to have you on again um we've been talking to shai tabali about his book unlocking the seven secret powers of the heart a practical guide to living in trust and love thank you so much just such an, um, an incredible loving person and so insightful and um, also just a beautiful sweet book thank you so much thank you so much thank you it's